Okay, and welcome to lesson one on how to work with Audacity for making beats and samples. So let's just get straight into it. And this is what we're going to learn to do today. Okay, you'll notice that we can see really clearly the different sections. So this is the first section we're going to do plays eight times through. Then we're going to have a little different section. And look as well that when we look at it here, from here to here, and from here to here, exactly the same size. So our piece already has structure, right? So that's going to be really important when moving forward that we're building something with structure. And then it goes back in the beat. And that's it. Uh, so, um, points for any of you that know what song this is from, but uh, we're going to find out in a sec. So we're going to open a new Audacity file and uh, no, cancel that. File, new file, new Audacity, there we go, right. And what I'm going to do is go to the folder, which has got the track in it, and yep, it's Drake. So I'm going to drag that in and it will load up. I can get rid of that. There we go. So. Uh, this is the track, play it from here. Okay, so that's the whole track and you can listen through it. So what we're going to do first of all is listen out for the bits where we've got the beats playing without anyone singing. So there's a couple of bits around the beginning that I quite like that might work. But you might remember from other lessons that I've chatted to you about, but obviously a good place to look for uh, is around the end. So I'm going to have a listen around here. Because normally the end of songs, singers stop singing for a bit. And just as part like the fade out, you start to find some bits where there are drums playing and no one's singing over the top. So there's a good bit. There was this guy talking. Got it. So there's just a hook at the end of that bit, but this is what we're talking about here. So uh, select. So as you can see, I've got uh, this one selected here, this vertical line. This is going to help me. As you can see, it comes up there. It says selection tool. This is really useful. Um, I'm going to use, be using this a lot to get in there and listen to things. So remember, uh, what I want to do then, once I've selected an area that I think is my loop, again, if I just click off that, I'm going to find a little bit. So I think it's between here and, say, here, like that. And then for this, uh, this works on PC and Mac. I'm going to go Shift and Space. And what that does is loop a section around that I've got highlighted. That doesn't work there. So I'm going to listen to this again from here. See what it sounds. Uh, so it's actually later on. So I think from here to maybe about here. Let's give that a go. Yeah, that's better. I mean, that's about right. So what I'm going to do is zoom in now at this point. Because I'm nearly there with it. And I think this bit wants to come back just before that hit. And then this bit's going to come forward a little bit. So you can see I get the fingers come out. This is like, I just discovered this the other day, but this is really useful because it lets me just bring those two little areas in. Let's try that again. Uh, okay, so it wants to go after this bit. Maybe, uh, I don't know, let's try this. And I'm going to bring this forward a little bit up to here, I don't know, we'll give it a go. No, nope. okay, so it's back here, this is the first bit that I want. Down, down, now, now, maybe back here. Ah, okay, got it. And then this bit right to the end there, here we go. Just about. I'm going to go in a little bit closer. I want it to sound basically at this point in it, I want to be as accurate as I can. 
yeah, just another nudge forward. Got it. Yeah, okay, good. I'm happy with that. I can feel that that's an exact loop now. This is the magic bit. So on a Mac, it's different on a PC, I think. Uh, on a Mac, it's going to be the Alt or Option button and the Command button and then the letter I. And check this out. Boom. It uh, takes it out of the track and it puts it in a new bit. So now I've got my loop and it's all clean and it's in a brand new track and that's ready to go. But before I go any further, I'm going to do exactly the same process now with the other bit. And uh, as you can see, all of these sounds are really high, like really high in volume. So I'm going to flip along to the end because I know that the other beat that I really liked. Yeah, just this little bit here. It's nice because it's just got a different kind of sound to it uh, and it's going to be really useful to use. So again, I'm going to zoom in. Uh, I want to get nice and tight on that first bit. Do, 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 do. Probably up to this one here. Let's give it a go. It's going to be about the same length as the other one that I did. Let's try it. Shift and space. Not long enough. Do, 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 do. Up to this line here. Right, let's give that a go. I don't think I've got enough on the beginning here, so I'm going to drag that forward a little bit more. Again, shift and space. And I'm a beat off here, so I'm going to drag this again. Take the little pointy finger and drag it forward up to the line. A little more, a little more. Shift and space. Nearly a bit too much. Bring it back, bring it back. One, two, three, four. And again, bring it forward a little bit. So you got a slight hiccup on it, not quite there, a little bit less. Two, three, four. Three, four. One, two, three, four. I like it. So again, option, command, I, and it brings it out and it's got it there. Okay. So these are the only two bits that I now need to work on. That is the slowest bit of getting these beats together. If you can get that bit done right, the next bit should be super simple and straightforward, I say that. But let's see. So what I'm going to do is mute this track, and here's a great thing. Because this is now getting a little bit muddled, what I can either do is drag this track up so it goes smaller. But because I'm not going to need it, I'm going to click this little up arrow, and it kind of just condenses it up to the top. And... I now need to move these two tracks to the beginning. So I'm going to zoom all the way out so I can see the whole thing. Okay. And this is the other really useful tool that I need to see here, the line. So this is the vertical line. This is the selection tool. This one that goes left and right. This is time shift. Basically, it's just to move. So if I click that and I go over this track here, instead of selecting it, I can now move it all the way along. So I'm going to move this back to here. I'm going to grab down. I'm going to move this forward because I want this somewhere near the beginning as well. Zoom out again, because this is quite a long track. Okay, good, now I can see the beginning, and I'm going to drag this right back to the start, like there, and then I'm going to drag this a little bit. I don't need it for too much. Drag it out there, something like that. That'll do. Oh. Okay, my computer's going a bit funny. Uh, too many things running, I think. Right, so... Uh, let me just fix that selector thing because it's not working. There we go. Okay, so looping. I've got the beat that I want. I can zoom back in now because I want to make this nice and tidy. Select this so I can move it to the front. Now it should be right at the beginning. Go. One, two, three, four. Okay, wicked. Wicked. Right. Now, here's a cool thing. If I select, it's gray when it's selected. You can see that one's gray. If I go up to here, if I just click on this part of the track, it selects everything that's there. Now, the good thing about extracting it into its own track is that's the only bit of audio in this whole track here. So, I now want to copy it, which is Command-C for copy, and then I'm going to push the right arrow, and that's going to bring my locator 
to the very end, exactly to the very end of this little sample, and I'm going to do Command V for paste. Two bars. Let's check it out. Okay, good. That's two bars. I now want to double this again. So this is the shortest cut. I just learned this. It's great. Click on that. It's going to uh, select the whole thing. Copy the whole thing. Right arrow key. Paste the whole thing. Now I've got four, but I want eight. So same again. Select the whole track. Copy. Go to the end. Paste. Told you this bit was easy. Now I've got half my track. Two, three, four. Okay, right. Uh, and that goes eight times. So that's like eight bars of music. Perfect. Now uh, I want to get into this little bad boy down here. So I'm going to drag it over to the front. I'm going to put it. Oh, and it snaps as well. So a really good uh, feature with this is that it will automatically kind of think like uh, it will know what you were, where you want to put it which is great. So now what I want to do is just check that when it goes from this beat into this beat that it works. And so I do a lot of previewing. So I'm just going to play from here. It's pretty smooth. Again, one more time. Uh, I'll take it. It will work for these purposes. Command copy, right click. So now I'm dealing with this track down here. Push to the end, two bars, click, copy, paste, four bars, click, copy, right arrow key, paste, eight bars. That simple. Now we're cooking. So it should smoothly go first beat into the second beat for eight bars. Two, three, four. Cool. Okay. I like it. And then uh, just to keep it balanced, to go back to the main beat, select here. I want the eight bars again. Copy. This is where things can be a little tricky because I now have one at my selector tool. I want to go back to the beginning bit, nudge, and then I can actually use my left and right arrow keys to get somewhere that I want. So in theory, this should go here, and I can go paste, and that's given me another eight bars at the end. So if I go from here. It transitioned. Yeah, okay, first time, done it, right. Stop now, I can zoom out and I can see the whole structure of my piece, beginning to end. This is the structure, right? Eight bars of the beat at the beginning. Then I'm going to put eight bars of a little breakdown, like a slightly uh, lighter beat, a bit of a thinner beat, and then this drops back in here. So this is now dictated my structure, okay? So uh, I can now, I can just get rid of that track at the top, so now this is nice and neat, and I can roll these up a little bit, because I'm going to come back to them, uh, and, and then I'm going to save it at that point, because that's great, and that's all I need, and I'm going to just do one last thing as well, this is like a double save to back it up, because these are all audio clips, right, uh, and if I move one around and I make a mistake, then sometimes it can knock the whole thing out, so what I actually want to do is get a audio of all of this stuff here, um, that I can then put back in. So what I'm going to do is go to File, and what I'm going to do is go to Export Audio, and I'm going to call this Mr. H's Dope Beat. I'm going to save it to the desktop. I'm going to click Save. It's going to tell me that it's going to mix it down. That's fine. Yes, okay to that too. And then if I go, let's have a look, if I take a peek, peek behind here, it should be on here, there it is. And if I drag this in, okie dokie, there it is. This is Mr. H's dope beat. And if I mute these, mute really important when it grays out, I'm not going to hear it. This is now like a permanent saved audio track of it and I can now put that in iTunes or whatever and it comes out as one whole track. Uh, we're going to keep it like this as well because this is really useful to see bars. These lines act as really useful markers when I'm editing. So, uh, But this is just a good little thing to have so I can bring it in again and start on it in case anything happens with this file. And that's it. Lesson one. Good luck guys.